It was one of the guitars that I've had that got stolen. This here, you can. Can you read it? Yeah. That was stolen out of the. Are you guys ready? My name is Charlie Parr. I'm here with Spider John Kerner today at Palmer's Bar on the West Bank in beautiful uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, today we're here talking about this guitar, which is uh, late 40s, early 50s Gretsch. I don't know what the year is. Yeah, me I don't either. know if it matters. This guitar belongs to Spider John. Uh, I'm its current caretaker, and today we're going to talk a little bit about its, uh, its history and, and John's history. Me and many of my friends have been incredibly influenced by this man and making music, and uh, uh, it's a great honor to be here with him today. So, so, so John, how, 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 long, how long have you had this? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Good. End of That's interview. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, probably back in maybe the 80s, somewhere in the 80s. Uh, I had had a, a, another Gretsch, very similar model to this one. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, back in uh, 72, I believe, I, uh, was going to go, I was going through one of these uh, change of life periods as some, as some people have now and then. Mm -hmm. I played my last job ever in uh, Jack's Bar in Cambridge, Massachusetts, at the end of which I gave the, I gave the guitar to somebody and left it, let it go. I didn't, even, I didn't know the guy or anything like that. And uh, I quit music forever, which lasted about a year. And uh, at that time, I was living in Denmark with my Danish wife. Mm -hmm. We had some, a, a Alan Lomax collection of, of uh, folk songs. And there was a guitar in the house, I guess it was belonged to my wife. I started looking at those songs and I thought many of them were just really, really great, you know, really great pieces of work. Mm -hmm. And I, I got to like the idea of, of doing that. I eventually wound up with a nifty little band, a couple of Danish guys, uh, and uh, one played the harmonica. He came a, became a really good harmonica player and another guy played the washboard. So we had Spider John's folk band. Anyway, it continued with that, and some efforts were made to try and locate the guitar that I'd given away, including a guy I stay with out there who was, was a detective, detective uh, for a while. Anyway, that, none of that came to fruition, and we kind of gave up on the idea of trying to find it, until one day, 25 years after I gave it to the guy in Jack's bar, I was getting ready to play a job. I had a job in Boise, Idaho at some college. Yeah. Just before I was gonna go on, go on playing, go on the stage, uh, this guy come up to me and he says, uh, come on out in the, in the parking lot. I want to introduce you to an old friend of yours. And I said, okay, I'm trying to think who that might be. We get out there, and in, in the bed of his pickup was a guitar case, which I started to recognize, and opened up, and there was the guitar, <laughs> exactly the way I'd handed it to the guy. It was like he never did anything with it. <laughs> I paid him a, a good finder's fee and enough money to get it back to Minneapolis, played it for years. But in the meantime, same guy was trying to find the old one, uh, Somehow, I don't know where he found it, but he found this guitar, which was, uh, the neck was kind of out of it, mm -hmm. you know, needed, needed work. And uh, I gave it to a friend of mine who's a luthier, and he was working on it, putting it back together. And there was a question as to whether this should be uh, restored just like it used to be originally, or whether it should be turned into a 12-string. And after some thought, I called him up and I says, let's, let's try to make it like it originally was. And he says, too late. Because <laughs> he'd turned it into a 12, this 12-string. This there it is. That's a, it's, a, it's an incredible guitar. It really is. And then, so he, 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 he did this work as well, or you did that work? Well, 
I have, I have done this kind of thing on several guitars, and I thought it was me who had done it, but now that when I look at it, it seems more likely that it was Charlie, because right. it seems kind of integrated into what was being done. Your, your Epiphone has a similar kind of... Yeah. yeah. At a time, I realized I wanted a, what they call a, a, a loose bridge, mm -hmm. right? Or a floating bridge. Floating bridge. Right. It's like on a, uh, on a, a, a violin. Yeah. In other words, the thing is just loose, and the only thing that keeps it in place is the pressure from the strings. Mm -hmm. But usually, when that's done, it's done by a, a, a tailpiece that's fitting here. The tailpiece is usually made out of metal one way or another. The problem with that is if you are playing and you break a string, the guitar immediately goes totally out of, out of tune, unplayable. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to solve that problem, and it came to me to, to take the, the pin stuff that used to be up here and just put it back here. And uh, that, solved the, that solved that problem. Now if you break a string, nothing, nothing happens to the tuning. Right, right. Yeah. No, it's great. If you look carefully at this, you can see that the, the name, which is inlaid up here, is misspelled. Uh, the original spelling is well, G-R-E-T-S-C-H. Well, this is G-R-E-T-R-C-H, right? Right. Yeah. Now, how, how a person could do, make a mistake like that is, is beyond <laughs> me. But anyway, so it makes it an odd thing. An odd thing. It was one of the guitars that I've had that got stolen. This here, you can... Can you read it? Yeah. That was stolen out of the, I was living over in Seward and I uh, parked my car after one job in the driveway instead of the garage <laughs> <laughs> with the stuff in it and some kids broke into it and took my amp and uh, the guitar. I didn't know what to find. You know, I looked at hawk shops and talked to police and all that kind of stuff. Nothing, nothing happened. Uh, but Eddie Feline, who had the, I believe it was called Southside Pride, put out an article about it. That's what this is. Some days later, a guy calls me up and he said he saw two kids uh, selling the, the amp and the guitar for 80 bucks in a bar. <laughs> and uh, some, I forget how, how he got a hold of it, but maybe he bought it. But in any case, I got that one back. Yep. So I've had both two of these things gone and, and returned. <laughs> what happened with giving it to Charlie here was I was trying to figure that out, lying in the bed one morning just trying to figure things out. I thought, for starters, it needs to go to somebody who's a player and probably a performer, and then it became obvious who should have it. <laughs> well, so well, I, appreciate I called up Charlie and uh, he agreed, and we came down here the next day and I turned it over to him. Yeah, well, I appreciate it, John.